or um, more specific. Um, had a question before class about the database assignment. And the database assignment, it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be an address book, but it should be like the address book application that we went over in class. So um, I think it's posted up there. Um, and you can download it and you can take a look at it. The, the key thing about that, there's three, three key points, I would say, um, about that one. And uh, actually, it's like in two pieces. There's a design and then there's the finished version. So the design, you'll just tell me what table you're going to have. Probably just stick to one table. It's probably the, the best. Yeah, nothing too extensive. Um, there's three things going on here that are important um, in, this, uh, in this assignment. Number one is actually doing database operations. So queries, updates, inserts, deletes, and so on. That's number one. Number two is associated with database is multiple threading. All right. The idea being that in terms of the device, um, a database operation potentially could take a while to execute, you know, compared to the speed that those electrons are zipping along inside the phone. It could take a long time or whatever, whatever is going on in there. Yeah, if it's a large database, yeah. So this is one case where when you're not really sure how long something is going to work, you don't want a, a single thread sort of tying up so that it can't respond to the UI. All right. Uh, if you have an Android device, you, uh, you may have seen uh, application has stopped responding. Do you want to quit or wait? It's like a real common error message um, uh, in Android. And what it means is, is that Android will display that message if a user action goes unaddressed for a certain length of time. So in other words, if it's caught up doing something else. And so therefore, what we want to do is we want to have multi-threads, where you have the UI still doing its thing while background sort of the, the database operation goes. So thread second uh, thing. The third thing is multiple activities. And, and associated with multiple activities is passing data from activity one and activity two. All right, so that's the three things that are sort of changing the screen, right? changing the screen. yes. It, it, it more, yeah. yeah, more or less, yeah. So there's more screens. You know, you can think of an activity as being one screen that you present to the user to do one thing, all right? And uh, um, this one has multiple activities. Now, the thing that's important with that as well, passing the data from activity one to activity two. So uh, in other words, if you're editing, you want to make sure you're pulling up the right one to edit. And if you're um, what, whatever, um, if you're just inserting a new row, you don't really need to, to pass any data. But if you're editing a row, you have to say which data, you, what data you're editing. So that's the three pieces of that one. You don't threading, by the way. Anytime there would be potentially operations that would keep the UI from responding. Um, I don't know if we'll go over it this semester or not, but in the Deedle book, there kind of like an old school video game where you aim a cannon and shoot it. Uh, if you think about it, there's targets that are moving back and forth. All right. As I'm aiming my cannon, I don't want my targets to stop. All right. I want the game to be able to respond to me aiming the target while still keeping the targets, or, or aim the cannon while still keeping the targets going up and down. All right. So the only way to do that is to have it in two threads. And that way, um, each thread gets a little bit of time. So a little bit of time is devoted to the aiming of the, the UI, the aiming of the cannon. A little bit of the time is devoted to moving the targets around. And again, it's so quick on, on, you know, compared to the way human scale is, is that it looks like it's doing the two things simultaneously. All right, other questions? I do not know. We're very proud of this one. Nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. I don't know if I said that as the final one or not. 
Um, that might be something uh, I, I would assume you wouldn't mind if we looked at that. No. Okay. Yeah. I'll. Uh, because there were questions, not necessarily today. I'll, I'll, I'll wait till more, more yeah, folks are here. Yeah, no, no offense, but you'll also be you'll you'll also be here um, when we go over. Probably people uh, didn't come because of either the fact that the wind blew them <laughs> away, uh, or uh, you know, get a work day that that maybe they weren't feeling well or whatever, and just as soon work uh, on it at home. Um, but yeah, we, we can take a look at that. That was one of the things. Uh, uh, one of the things that I had mentioned was was what was that if there are special topics you would like me to cover that we have not already, um, to to shoot me an email. Uh, and one of the things that people mentioned was adding a splash screen. Well, you know, might as well show that. You know, um, some of the other ones people said are animations, which that has, right? So that would kind of kill two birds with one stone. And then things like with the accelerometer, you know. And what I'm thinking with that is do something silly like when, yeah, a ball rolling or when you shake the phone, it rolls a dice, you know, or something like that. So, um, yeah, exactly. Now, to a large degree, that is, um, and again, that class has kind of been an odd sort of class because I've only taught it as an independent study. But that's kind of the intent of the um, advanced Android class is to look and say, you know, this is basic programming using the basic framework. Now let's get into the, all the Android-y specialty things, uh, integrating with the camera, integrating with whatever. All right. Other Right. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, I, I sometimes think that I've only written one program and every program has been like copying the first program and then changing a few things and the second, third program was copying the second and changing a few things. But, but yeah, you know, over time, it is true. And, and it's almost like an icebreaker, you know. It's like once, once you have it down, it's like, oh, okay, that's how I do it. And then you can add it to your, your um, toolbox of, of things that you're, you can do. Right. 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 And again, and, and, and that's really the nice thing about the approach um, um, that, that can be taken where you separate like UI elements from functionality and things like that. Then you can plug one thing in without affecting the other thing. Uh, that's probably a smaller case of it, but the same idea is, is, uh, is there. Are there other questions? No. I just keep an eye on that, um, well, for a number of reasons. But one that tells me that um, I have the right camera on and I'm not like showing something else. And we've had some malfunctions where we've gotten like elevator music piped in. I don't know if that was this class or some other class, so. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So I kind of keep on it, um, keep looking at it. Um, other questions? Um, okay. Um, what we can do then is, do you have questions concerning your code? Wow. Okay, well, let's. Yeah, well, the I have to say, a lot of times when I have, when I have. Um, I usually have like a backup plan. Yeah. I didn't have a backup plan today. I was assuming people would have questions. Yeah. But, yeah. Is in your town? Yeah, there's two. Oh, really? 
Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I, I, I appreciate the thought, but yeah, Nick Cage really, uh, That's the worst yeah, right. <laughs> like if, if, you say, if you were to say like, you know, Harrison Ford was there or, right, yeah, then you never showed up, right, right, yeah. <laughs> don't, uh, <laughs> don't flatter yourself, Zellers, I know. Yeah, if uh, Han was there, you would not. Well, right. I I probably would have canceled class. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, 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 you know, I guess we could go into a whole philosophical rant, but my opinion is that, you know, at a community college, you need to be, um, What's the right word? Um, adaptable, flexible, yeah. Um, because you know, we have you know we have students from all different kinds of backgrounds and doing all kinds of different things, and they have families and and so on. And like you said about the work, you know, um, you shouldn't be penalized by the fact that you're actually working in this field and learning in this field too, and you want to continue to improve you know, pick up more skills by attending classes. So if we can accommodate it, then by all means. Now, are either of you a Fallout 4 person? Um, I played play, play the original way back in the day. Okay. But I swear to God, I wasn't a bunch of shit. I, had, I, I took off from work yesterday. Oh, yeah, right, right. I, I, I saw I'm working two extra hours per week. Okay, so I right. take up 48 hours out of the week. Right. Gotcha. Um, but this kid, he had, he is hired at least salary and 40 hours at 60. He calls off Tuesday, Fallout 4, and then he calls off yesterday, too, so Fallout 4. Meanwhile, here I am working 10 hours a day throughout the week trying to make up these hours, and he's taking off some video games. I really wanted to punch him in the face. Yesterday was the day that it was. Right, 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 sure. I used to uh, I, I, I used to feel bad even though I was a little kid. Like I would get off school, but my dad, who was a veteran, had to work. You know, it's like where's the justice there? You know. Yeah.
Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. 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 You get two weeks of vacation time per year. Uh huh. That's eighty hours of free pay that you get. With that one extra hour per day, every day, that's two hundred and fifty hours that they're taking from you, not paying you for lunch, but they're only giving you eighty back. So realistically, by doing that, they're scamming from you one hundred and eighty work hours. And they're not truly giving you any vacation time. They're just giving you your earned lunch breaks. They're giving you your lunch breaks all at once. Yeah, wow. Wow. You think of it that way. When I said that, I was like, holy shit, did I just stumble on to some like, giant conspiracy? <laughs> like, we're going to make them think we're giving them time off. Right. Actually, yeah, they just extended their work day by an hour. Yeah. Any situation where I've worked where I was, quote, salary was like, your salary when it comes to, we don't have to pay you for working more time. You're not salary as far as if you have to leave uh, a couple hours early for a doctor's appointment or something like that, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, after Although, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Because when I was working for All right, I decided we're going to look at the Canon game, because, because why not? Um, and what we're going to look at is we'll look at a few different things, but um, again, the idea is we're going to look at some specific functionality in here. And one of the pieces of functionality we're going to look at is, is again, the threading. Because the threading is important here as well, because you do not want to, oops, I lost already. Okay, reset gain. All right, I can move my thing. I'm trying to hit the blue and yellow things. All right, and the black thing is like a shield. So. Yeah. It sure looked like it, yeah. Ah, okay. And I think you get bumped for if you hit it. And I think you get time deducted if you miss. Yeah. Uh, not miss, but yeah, hit the hit the blocking. So again, let's take a look at this, and so I guess what. Um, we look at in this is, well, we'll see what, what we look at in this. So let's go and look at, first of all, this is kind of goofy but there is a line class, all right? And, ooh, the line class, I imagine, is because we have a lot of lines in this, right? We have our target, and we have our um, blocker. So we have our segments of the target, then we have our blocker. So they probably all use this class for that, all right? Let's look at what we have in the resources. In the resources, we have our drawables. We have our layout. We have in our raw resources the different um, WAV files that run based on the, the sound yeah, the sound. Yeah. So the target being hit is that one. The, the cannon shooting is that. And hitting the block is that. Values. Let's look at the values. Actually, not a lot in there. All right. A little bit um, of stuff. 
this is the this is something that we actually looked at last time when we were formatting your output for the currency conversion I think of how you can actually format your output to look a certain way all right so for example where it says shot fired total time notice it shows you that to um, one decimal point so if I run this and we watch the counter up here it's showing you that to one decimal point and that's the formatting in this string all right um, Pardon me? Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, the, the, the canon is a semicircle or a circle and a rectangle. Each of these are lines. So yeah, no images or whatever. Now again, getting back to sort of your point, yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you do explicitly make this point, but sort of uh, with a little and like making a gift for that or making those look like, I don't know, a tank or something, you know, you could, you could make the application be a lot, lot cooler. Exactly, exactly. All right, now, if we look at this, the one thing that we do different here is if we look at the main, the main only has one view in it. It has a canon view. A canon view? Is that something in the Android framework? No. In fact, we know it isn't because it's specified as view, as opposed to Android colon canon view or whatever. Now, let's think about that and think about what that means. What is a view? A view is something that you put on the screen. All right? Now, we've seen when we looked at tables, for example, where one view holds other views, right? A table, for example, can contain table rows. And like in uh, the rock, paper, scissors, we added a row each time through. And a, uh, a table row can contain other stuff as well. It could contain labels, it could contain images or buttons or whatever. So when we think of a view, those views can be nested. It's sort of like HTML in a way in that you have these things that can be nested. Now, Canon View is not one of the built-in. They didn't happen to have a Canon View floating around for this game that all we had to do is put it on our page. We created a custom view. All right? We created a custom view. Now, this is worth talking about a little bit because uh, I'm going to see if I can find quickly another app, and if I can, we'll look at that. Otherwise, we'll come back to this for a minute. A custom view is where you take a view and create a sub of view that's your own view, that everything can be handled in that view. All right? And so if we look here, the layout only contains the view. The Canon game, all it does essentially is displays that view and handles the events. All the events it passes to the Canon view to handle. This is another form of um, separating like the UI activity from the problem domain activity. In this case, the game logic separated from the UI um, um, object. Let me look for
telling me it's in like the recycle bin. Yet my recycle bin is empty. So, interesting. The reason I'm showing this is this is related to the custom view in the um, in the Canon game. We'll come back to this one, but I do want to show that. At any rate, Canon view. Canon view extends surface view. All right. And a surface view is simply like a blank screen that we can put things in. Notice all the action takes place in this. So, in other words, all the variables for like how many points you get for hitting uh, the target, how much time is taken off for missing the target, or hitting the, the blocker, total time elapsed, and all that is handled here in that view. So... We set our custom view, and we have a pointer to it. 
The other thing that's different from this is we have a gesture detector. All right? A gesture detector is for things such as touching anywhere on the screen or swiping on the screen or double tapping. All right? So we create the gesture detector the same way that we create the on-click listener. All right? Simple on gesture listener equals new simple on gesture listener. And we have our different activities based on what we do. So, a tap calls the align cannon method. A swipe aligns the cannon and fires a cannonball. And a double tap fires the cannonball. So, Let's go and run this. If I swipe, oops. yeah. If I notice I swipe, it aligns it and fires it versus one touch aligns it. A double tap aligns it, well, the first touch aligns it, and the second one um, shoots it. So if we were running this on a device, the on fling would be a little more um, visible. Notice, though, that's it in the activity. The activity simply has bringing up the view. Um, we allow the volume keys to set the game volume, all right? And then we have in here a gesture handler, which is like an event listener. It does the same thing, the difference being that um, we can write our code for on down, on fling, and so on. Let's look at the canon view. The canon view has everything associated with the game itself. All right. Now, the view may need to talk to the activity. All right. The activity can talk to the game because, I'm sorry, the activity can talk to the view because that view is the content view for that activity. All right. And therefore, canon view, we grab a pointer to the canon view. So the activity has a point to that canon view, which is everything about the game. The canon view contains all this stuff. All right? And the activity has a pointer to that called canon view. All right? So. If I double tap, or I tap, or I swipe, my gesture detector here can call a method on the cannon view. All right. Now, when it calls a method, notice it gives it a variable called E. That E, again, is the event that actually occurred. So we'll be able to tell from that event like what happened. It's not enough to say I want to aim the cannon. How do I want to aim it? Notice that when I'm aiming the cannon, if I click up here, it points it there. If I click down here, it points it there. Right? So it's not aim the cannon. I want to know what I want to aim it at. And that E gives me everything about the event that just occurred. All right. So included in that E is going to be the coordinates, the X and Y coordinates of what I, where on the screen I touched. So it can use that information to point the cannon at the place where I touched. Likewise with swipe, likewise with fire. This code at least is, as far as it goes, fairly straightforward. Again, not much in the activity. 
Activity is simply handling the, the UI aspects of it. All right? Now, that leads me to believe that there better be some threat in the view. Because if they're not, then the activities view could get caught up in moving my guys back and forth and not be able to respond to the UI touching or shooting the cannon or whatever. I'll look at the cannon view. Here's where the action really is. We'll go. First thing we do is we set our activity to be we set the variable context. Another view live. This view live and an activity. So this will the canon be able to communicate with the canon activity. Alright? Now, we create the blocker, which is a new line. Target, which is a new line. Cannonball, which is a new point. We initialize the hit states as a Boolean array. What hit states? The hit states tell if each element in the top can hit or not. All right? So if I the first and I hit the first element, that's going to be true in that array. My target consists of a certain number of pieces. All right? And the array tells me how many target pieces there are. All right, I did not copy the entire thing in. That's what's wrong. All right. Number of target pieces is set to seven. So this hit array becomes a seven element array, which is going to be initialized as all false. All right. But then as we hit them, it's going to flip that to true. All right. We set up some things for the audio, for the preloaded sounds. We create the different objects for the text, the cannonball, or the cannon, the cannon ball, the blocker, the target, and the paint. We have this method that would change, that would fire off when Ever the view changes. Can I go and rotate this guy? If I change things around, it would recalculate it. So, so he changes. How is going to change? It's really going to change based on the orientation. Is the only way that it's going to change. It goes right. You want to make the time. All right. So the patients screen to determine different things are. So the is the screen from the left. Alright? So the blue is, is the screen from the left. Alright? Again it's pretty straightforward. 
is just doing some computation and figuring out where things are. Just a right. In what do I want to say? That there's two. There, there's two um, dimensions of a of a problem. And then there's the or the size of it, if you will. So counting the number of grains of sand on the beach, that's not a particularly hard. It's just a problem that's going to take a long time to do because there's a lot to do. So is a was a uh, number ever is probably a small all right so uh, you know the small you put an app for <laughs> so, there's some complex and as I mentioned here it might be but each step it's based on the size of the screen. It's setting up the size of those different elements. All right. We initialize a hit state to false. And here is method that I want to look at. Ah. Cannon thread. All right. Now remember, why do we want a thread associated with this cannon? Because we do not want the moving of those things going back and forth, all right, to interfere with the user touching the screen. We want to devote a little time devoted to this problem to waiting for and handling the user's touch of the screen and a little bit of the time devoted to moving the things. So we create a new Canon thread. That's an inner clock because that's type associated with this. We go to this. Canon thread extends thread. We have and all at some point we run the threat. All right, and that's what when we run the thread, that's what is going to be going through the process of updating the position of the stuff on the screen. So while thread is running. What it does is it goes through and it calculates how much time is left, how much time is elapsed, and it does this update positions. All right? And it redraw game elements and then it updates the time. All right? So this thread in a nutshell is running positions and draw elements in the background. What does our conditions do? It's 
locations of thing. So if the cannonball screen, in other words, the fact it adjusts and based how long it and the there's that to control cannonball. All right. Which the cannonball the block. All right. So cannonball and the block is a we'll see if the X and Y cannonball X with the stop and of the cannonball. If we reverse the direction of the cannonball. All right. So we change the velocity. One. We do the x velocity. All right. So was if right when it, the Thank you. Sure. All right. So if there's a collision, in other words, if the x and y coordinates touch the blocker, then we reverse the x, which is a horizontal velocity. So in other words, if I'm shooting down at a certain rate of speed, it continues to go down at that rate of speed. It just, instead of going to the left, will go to the right. So that's how that goes. And I go and deduct from the time the penalty, and I play the sound. All right? Otherwise, I look to see if we have gone past the range of the screen. All right, and if we have, we make the cannonball disappear. All right. So in other words, if we shoot a ball, a cannonball, and it goes off either the top, oh, that was weird. If it goes off, we make the cannonball disappear. The way this code is written, if there's already a cannonball on the screen, you can't shoot another one. So you can't just sit there, da -da -da -da. no machine guns are allowed in this game. Finally, we check to see if the cannonball comes in contact with the target. And it does that with a similar sort of algorithm. It then determines what section of the target it hit. All right, and if that section has already been hit, it ignores it. But if it was hit, just this time, it sets the state to true. It gets rid of the cannonball, it gives me the reward, and it plays the hit sound. If all the targets have been hit, then I've won the game. All right. So this happens This happens This gets started through the thread And effectively, it runs over and over and over again. All right. After this loop completes, it goes up as long as the thread is still running and repeats itself. All right. Now, this is where this is what would get you in trouble if this was not in its own thread. 
because this process is in a very tight loop that's going to go and this would dominate the process's time and not be able to respond to the user interface touch. So this is the exact reason that loop is constantly going through and looking to see and moving those things back and forth. That loop, if unchecked, would just get all of the CPUs or all of the process's time devoted to this. So being in a thread, the time is split between it's paying attention to the UI and it's paying attention to this guy. Now, the other thing we do, after we've determined whether the cannonball was hit or not, is we update the position of the stuff. And we simply set the x and y by multiplying by the velocity. The velocity are um, or attributes here. And we do that until the time left is equal to zero and then we pop up that they've lost. Because if the time hits zero and there's still targets up there, we've lost. The other thing we do is we actually draw the stuff on the screen. We start out by, and this is amazing in a way, but as this runs, every time through the loop, it's completely redrawing the screen. Is it really? Yeah. Because you notice right here, it is drawing a rectangle to, it's drawing essentially a giant white rectangle over everything there. All right? We display the time, we display, if there's a cannonball, we draw the cannonball in the position that it is. We draw the cannonball barrel. We draw the cannonball circle. We draw the blocker. We set the current points. And we draw all the target pieces that have not been hit. All right. So the two main methods that run in this guy's thread are The method that updates the position and the method that redraws it. So it alternates between all those. Everything on the screen is an object of one thing or another. Um, the cannonball, for example, is a point. Cannonball is a point. The blocker, or the target, is a line. The blocker is a line, and so on. So every one of these is an object that we are keeping track of the velocity of, the position of, in terms of the x and y coordinates. All right? So we keep, we're keeping track of all that. Um, by virtue of being a line, remember that line object that we looked at a while ago? What's in a line object? Well, the x and y coordinates. All right? And a point already has an x and y coordinate associated with it. So we don't have to have instance variables for the location of the target and the location of the cannonball because by virtue of the fact that this is a point, it has a x and y coordinate, and we can access those. So our thread that's running in the background does two th things. One is it sets programmatically the position of everything on the screen. All right? But this doesn't do the visual, right? In other words, if we got rid of this method, This method of draw game elements, all right, the game would still play, we just would have no idea where anything was, all right. 
So logically, there are objects that correspond to everything in the game. The cannonball, the, the cannon, the blocker, and the target. And those get positioned on the position in the position elements method. All right? The visual counterpart to them gets set in the draw game element. So this is what actually draws the stuff on the screen based on the computations that are done here. Yes. Okay. I'll be I'll be wrapping up in a second here. The, yeah, I say the main thing I wanted to, to talk about in this one is the threading aspect of it. And again, the importance of the threading is that we would not want the game just to go back and forth and not allow or allocate any time to do the touching and the firing off. All right. So we'll probably spend some time on Tuesday to wrap this up. I would hope to have the custom example of the, um, the photographer one that I was trying to run that was giving me an air. I would hope to have that done and then we'll look at some of the other things that people had asked of like, you know, the sensors or animation or, or possibly your um, splash screen. Yeah, I'll make sure. Yeah, make sure, yeah. Or you could even send it, yeah. All right. That's all I had.